Hello again. So today I want to look at two particularly fascinating and uh, huge books, you could say as well, literally in a physical way and also in terms of their content and their importance, I feel, within permaculture. So first one is Bill Mollison's Permaculture Designer's Manual. Now, um, as you see, both of these books are rather tatty. I was lucky when I bought this one second hand in 1996. Um, mine has double, double sleeve uh, paper cover for some reason. And uh, you can tell it's old because it has my old name in it before I became a Rania. Um, now this, um, so Bill Mollison and David Holmgren started permaculture as an idea back in the 1980s. And uh, a couple of books were written. Uh, the first one um, was kind of David Holmgren's PhD thesis, really, but Bill Mollison was his professor, so this, that one. And then later, or quite soon afterwards, Permaculture 2 came out. Um, and so, but essentially, they were just a collection of ideas that were coming together. And so in 1988, uh, this book was published. Now, there is apparently rumours that it's being in the process of being updated. So it's in the sense that permaculture for me is something that's constantly evolving, like everything that's living, that uh, the more people come into it, the more ideas we bring to permaculture, the more useful it becomes, if you like. Um, now, the designer's manual, this was really written for a group of people who were going out into the world and trying to fix problems that humans have been creating all over the place. And so this were very much uh, the chapters of this book and the information, the ideas inside are very much aimed at people that will be going out and having to work in deserts and the tropics and the wet landscapes and cool climates and so on. And so there are chapters for these things, all of these things. There's a, uh, a chapter on earthworks and earth moving equipment, which many people are unaware of. Um, and really it kind of lays the basis of what permaculture is about. Although if you read the first chapter or two around design, design methods and so on, there's quite a lot of things in here, principles and things that really many people, if you talk to them about permaculture or they learn permaculture now, will never have heard of. So it's very much, um, I would say, something to to study because it's much more below the surface of permaculture than we might initially perceive. Um, one thing I particularly like about the book is it's full of pictures. It lays out many of the original kind of uh, ideas that have become classic. Um, perhaps not so much the principles. Some of the principles of permaculture we'll find in here. Um, some of the principles come from another book, which I'll talk about next month, um, which was for me also inspirational and came out about the same time, actually. Um, but uh, lots of fantastic photos by Andrew Jeeves, Pattern Understanding, that's inspired a whole book that I'm writing at the moment. Um, Bill put this on chapter four. He obviously thought this was quite important and essentially talks about how he just wants to start a conversation so we can get into the finer detail of how do we use pattern in design successfully. You can see uh, lots of beautiful diagrams. Um, but yes, it's it's a big book. There's 550 odd pages. Um, but essentially, how do you do permaculture in different climates? What they've tried to do basically is to accumulate all the basic information about wherever you are in the world and what you might need to do and understand about that place and how you do it, but also what does nature do. Um, of course, published back in the day where rather than having colour photos in between, generally in the text, that they're all cluttered into a collection of plates in one place, which these days feels a little bit frustrating, really. <laughs> you have to go looking for that picture somewhere else. Um, but an excellent book, um, quite difficult to sit down and read in one go, although there are some who would say, of course you can. <laughs> um, fascinating, sometimes a little bit frustrating in terms of, for me, just the general layout of the book and 
what order things are carried you know with my current understanding and i think my, our general kind of awareness in permaculture of how to use it now um i'm looking let's just say i'm looking forward to the update um not a cheap book to buy because it's printed in australia and basically um it costs quite a lot to get it over here certainly to britain so but um, essential reading if you're doing any permaculture seriously the other book which um, is also fairly well worn at least it is a hardback but hardbacks uh, in my experience eventually because people pull them off the shelves like this particularly when I take these books on uh, permaculture courses it's the library that do that a few too many times and um, basically it starts to rip off so my earth care manual is fairly well loved this is patrick whitefield's kind of big book if you like that he wrote um going back a decade or so now again a similar kind of size but really what this book is this book is um sectioned up rather differently so um whereas the designer's manual there's a lot of it is looking at the specifics of cool climates hot tropics that kind of thing um this one is looking more at you know water, soil, energy, buildings, and that kind of thing. Um, again, uh, a lot of text. Again, a colour section of plates there. But again, lots of diagrams, lots of useful information, things, um, lots of check boxes and things. The chapter on soil in here I've found particularly useful over the years. It's very good um, introduction to just generally what you need to know about soil and such. There are the soils, chapter three. Um, this one, this is a book though that's very much targeted at um, people in cool temperate climates like Britain uh, and Northern Europe and so on. So there's very much a theme around that. And the, the last part of the book is about design it's um, a useful start for me. It's fairly, because I've written a book about design, it's a little bit short, but it covers all the main points that you need and helps put it into context of the rest of the book. So both these books are excellent. The Earth Care Manual would set you back a lot less money than buying a copy of the Designer's Manual at the moment. And if you live somewhere like Britain, I would start here. Um, but the Designer's Manual really is an essential buy if you're uh, doing any kind of permaculture. Both excellent, both books to probably dip into more than try and read from cover to cover. <laughs> but uh, either way, there's rewards inside, um, whichever you start first.